I'm Bob Andelman, and this is the Mr. Media Interview. You can see, here and read more than 1,200 of my previous celebrity interviews at mrmedia.com. That's mrmedia.com. Subscribe to the show on YouTube, Apple Podcasts, iTunes, Spotify, Google Play, Alexa Podcasts, or Stitcher, and follow me on Twitter and Facebook. And if you like the show, please tell the world with a five-star review on iTunes or Apple Podcasts. On today's show, I'll talk to David Brown, former host of Marketplace on National Public Radio. He has a new podcast called Business Wars that tells the story of classic corporate clashes such as Nike versus Adidas, Netflix versus Blockbuster Video, Beats versus Monster Cable, and Marvel versus DC Comics. Stick around. If you're going to be successful in business, you've got to be able to stomach conflict. You have to be hard-headed, believing the world needs what you're selling, and never take no for an answer. Some of us might wish ethical decision-making, carbon footprint, and a bit of kindness were high atop that list, but, you know, realistically, those are not always the first thoughts of someone in the midst of empire building. This is something I know a little about, having co-authored books with some of the world's most successful ball-busting entrepreneurs. Not that they don't have hearts and souls, but business is war. David Brown knows this. As host of the new Wondery podcast series, Business Wars, every week he breaks down some of the world's greatest us-versus-them company conflicts and gives them new life through narrative commentary and conversational recreations. To date, Business Wars has compellingly examined Nike versus Adidas, Netflix versus Blockbuster Video, Beats versus Monster Cable, and Marvel vs. DC Comics. You might recognize David's voice as the former he- host of Marketplace on NPR. He is also managing editor and anchor of the daily statewide public radio news hour, Texas Standard, based at Austin NPR affiliate KUTFM. You can also hear him nationally as a contributor to All Things Considered and Morning Edition. David Brown, welcome to Mr. Media. Well, thank you very much, Mr. Beatty. I appreciate that. That, That's a very lovely introduction. It's it's a delight to get a chance to say hello. Well, good to have you here. I enjoyed the show. And I got to say, when I first heard about your new show, uh, Business Wars, it seemed like such an obvious program idea that I wanted to slap myself for not thinking of it. (laughs) Well, I I think all credit goes to Hernan Lopez at Wondery. Uh, That's our our parent company uh, for Business Wars and bunch of other uh, terrific podcasts and he thought the same thing i mean it, it's like why hasn't this been done before because i think all of us i mean you think about the things that we interface with every day from you know i mean apple versus samsung for example mm-hmm. how many times have we gotten stuck in that conversation right i mean uh and, and there's a lot to, to be said there um and you know as as with our most recent um series on on dc versus marvel i mean passions run high and there's a great backstory to all of these business wars and so yeah i i too was surprised when ernan reached out and said hey we've got this great idea and it's like really this hasn't been done before uh it's, it's, it's a little a little hard to believe but we've been having a lot of fun with it and speaking personally as someone who's you know i i, I love business and i love the stories that are attached to to business um this has been a real delight for me, and it's been fun to share these stories, even with my kids. You know, hmm. you, you think about Nike versus Adidas, and my uh, 12-year-old is a self-described sneakerhead. <laughs> so to get to, to to get to tell these, you know, to get to tell the backstory of how Adidas came to be and and how Nike became dominant, you know, he's uh, he's glued to it. So uh, it's it's been rewarding on a lot of levels for me. And with so much material to choose from, so I mean, you know, pick a business and there's a war. How do you decide yeah. um, what to present week to week at this point, where you're just, you know, you're just getting into it? Well, I, I think one of the things that um, you'll appreciate, Mr. Media, is, I mean, knowing the media as you do, is that um, the more people that you have behind the scenes who are expert in what they do the better the ultimate product is going to be. So, what um, what we've done is is we, we've looked for people who have actually done the heavy lifting, the the research on these stories, and we found the compelling stories, and then worked 
from that point. So we begin with the the authors of books on you know these uh, uh, these conflicts, like for instance Netflix and and HBO. Um, of course, it was Netflix versus Blockbuster really initially, but then that became Netflix versus HBO, and before you know it, you're really talking about a reshaping of the entire video industry. And that's an ongoing story. I mean, look at what's happening in court right now with AT and T uh, uh, and Time Warner, um, and uh, uh, and of course that uh, being challenged by the Justice Department. But we're seeing all the rules being rewritten because of a revolution in how that service is being provided. Mm-hmm. And none of this really had to have happened if you really go all the way back. It's no, there's nothing inevitable about history, of course. But if you take it all the way back, it's not altogether clear that Netflix would have been Netflix, that things would have evolved to where we are today, were it not for some dunderheaded decisions made by Blockbuster back in the late 90s and early 2000s. So um, that's part of the fascination to me, too, is is not just business, but but history. Um, so uh, that that's uh, we begin with we begin with a great story. Uh, is is what I'm trying to say. And then we build out from there and we think about some of the basics that go into um, telling that story for the ear. Ernan likes to talk a lot about, Ernan is the head of Wondery. Hmm. He likes to talk a lot about immersive podcast experience, uh, the, the immersive podcast experience. And what he means by that is, you know, when we produce this, after we, you know, polish the script and after we've made it so that it's really ear friendly, then we add to that a lot of sound effects, a lot of uh, um, uh, actual audio from the events as we can uh, gather it. And so in a way you were there, you know, as these events are unfolding to the best that we can create or recreate it. And I think that's part of the appeal um, of, of the program. It certainly is part of the appeal for me. Uh, and I've had several people say, you know, I, I, I've never really heard a, a podcast quite like it. And uh, though I'm no expert in, you know, uh, the diversity of podcasting that been to that, um, it, it is a, a different sort of experience than you know, what you might find on a lot of other podcasts. Well, the show, the show would make a nice fit on Audible in that uh, huh. it's narrative storytelling with uh, occasional recreations. It's like listening to a book in a lot of ways, which makes sense if you're, you know, if you're starting with that as source material. Um, that makes sense. Yeah, I hadn't thought about that, but yeah, yeah, the audible comparison is is really good. Well, and the other thing I I, I was thinking about, uh, it's funny, uh, but because of a conversation we had before we started, but uh, it also seemed to, to me to lend itself to to be produced as video, like for for YouTube, with by adding uh, art and particularly, I was thinking about uh, uh, versus so we had a series of art to to show what would work. For, uh, to show all the, the, <laughs> the shoes or block, yeah. blockbuster. I mean, I find it interesting to mention blockbuster uh, thing. Uh, they were you really uh, criticize you go to blockbuster in the old days, and they knew you were not going to find the movie, the hot movie you were coming in because they <laughs> they they had enough to you or they captured you. You were going to go with something. Right. If it's not, but at least where next, part of where Netflix beat the pants off them because I think you really put your finger on. Remember though, and they read there so that I could get the you know, right. And yeah, you uh, that I disappoint. And annoyed at the cynicism, and and was under experience from the and you know, I, I also work in public radio as you mentioned, and and one of the things that we talk a lot about just philosophically is that the listener is always you know that's always what it's about. It's always about the listener, and the minute you lose the plot there, the the minute you forget that it's not about the producer. It's not about the conceit for this particular segment or what have you. It's all about that experience for the listener. The minute you lose that plot, you've lost your audience. And and I, I think that in a way, writ large, that's what the what the Netflix story is all about in their own different ways, both Netflix and HBO. Uh, HBO it certainly is continues to be a, a terrific American success story. But to the extent that they've lost some traction with with Netflix, I think it's because of a small degree of hubris. Hmm. And and that's and that's a common thread, I think, that we see uh, throughout a lot of these business wars is that that those who are successful believe that there's a reason for their success. And 
and th- whatever that reason is, whatever that special, and uh, and they and they forget that really the specialness is about the end user. Well, um, we're recording this literally the day before the latest Marvel Cinematic Universe film, uh, Avengers: Infinity War, debuts in theaters. I'm guessing yeah. it is no coincidence that you just did a series of shows about Marvel Comics versus DC Comics. Well, there's, I, I, I would imagine that's true. Um, and, and I'd be lying if I, if I uh, said that I was the one who's making the calls on which you know, business wars we're actually doing. I'm not. Uh, it's, um, the program is produced uh, by Karen Lowe. Uh, and uh, she, you know, I, and a whole series of people, uh, Marshall Louis also at Wondery. And a lot goes into the count of, you know, which business war we're going to do when and, and for what reason. And I'm sure that that was a factor. I thought the same thing when I heard that we were going to be doing Marvel versus DC. Hmm. What are your uh, most memorable takeaways from the comic book wars? So many. Um, I've, I grew up, uh, I don't know about you, but I grew up as a... I, haven't gr- I have and, not grown up yet. I'm sorry. Me too. Well, I'm glad that you admit it because <laughs> that, that frees me up a little bit. Sorry. Uh, you know, I, I'm still Batman 66. I mean, in a way... Um, that was a, that was so much a part of my life that I've often wondered, and I hate to admit this, but I've often wondered whether it became an almost religion to me. You know, my kids watch it in the car and, and I listen back to those, those episodes and think, gosh, I really did kind of internalize a lot of those ideals that were, you know, in a, in their, in their own campy way that I was oblivious to when I was a little kid. I, I really internalized a lot of this stuff, you know, that the good does always triumph. <laughs> and, <laughs> and, uh, but at, at any rate, I guess what I want to say is I knew a lot about the comics going into, uh, this Marvel's experience. I suppose because of my affinity with Batman, I've always thought about myself as a DC guy, hmm. but of course you can't be into comics without, you know, knowing about Marvel without, you know, having experienced the, the, the shouting matches with your friends who were into the other side. And so, you know, we, we did a lot of that. Uh, me and my friends would, would argue about it. And my friends, I always felt like they had an ace in the hole because they were Marvel fans. You know, they were, they were into Spider-Man, mostly Spider-Man, but, but also, uh, Avengers at the time. And, um, they would, uh, they would always kind of give me stick about the fact that DC was too buttoned down and too starchy. Well, there was a reason for that. It all goes back to the brave and the bold number 28. Now, I don't know if you're, are you a comic books fan? By oh any yeah. Chance? Oh yeah. Okay. Do you know, do you happen to know what the brave and the bold number 28 is all about? Uh, I won't blame you if you don't. Because this, I, I, this I, isn't I, a, as soon as you tell me, I'm going to just clip my fingers right. and, and, and know. Uh, the year was 1960. Okay. And maybe some of your listeners, some of your viewers know, know what I'm talking about. But was that the, year the first was Flash? No. No, no. no but, but it was the first It was the first Justice League. Oh, with the, was it the Justice League or the Justice Society at that point? That they you brought? know, I think it was Justice League because okay. there was a Justice Society made up of so-called Earth 2 characters right. before they too right but i but this was uh, at least uh, this is the this is the lore is justice league we're talking about here now i may have this backwards but 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 here's the here's the the real nut of it at that moment stan lee was getting ready to quit at marvel now marvel was really founded on the back of dc's success with superman which would have put the founding of marvel around 39 or 1940 Mm -hmm. and its first real hit was captain america right okay so Fast forward, and Stan Lee's been with his company for most of his life, and his wife is saying, "Really, do you want to do this?" And Stan Lee is thinking, "I don't know. You know, I don't know. I just, this this is you know, I've done about as much as I can possibly do." And when this when this Brave and the Bold number twenty eight comes out, something a spark is lit, you know, inside Stan Lee's mind, and his wife recognizes it, and she says, "What is it that you really want to do, Stan?" And he and he confesses that he wants to to take comics to some other level. He really wants to he wants to do comics in a way that that's that's relatable that has never been done before. You know, he wants not just superheroes, but superheroes who are human, too. And as a result of 
that conversation and his decision ultimately not to leave Marvel and to stay with the comics, Fantastic Four emerges. Now, Fantastic Four is an interesting comic in its own right and an interesting you know, uh, concept. But it's just the start. I mean, it's just the start of the Marvel Universe. And one of the wonderful things about that Fantastic Four series that I think was truly groundbreaking was that if you can imagine you getting superpowers at some point, yeah, it's going to be great. You've got superpowers, but you've also got all of these other things that kind of baggage that comes with it. And it's that baggage that DC never really addressed, but Marvel would. And that gave these characters dimensionality. Hmm. And that was and, and, and that breakthrough in terms of the way these h- humans were talked about and explored in the comic books ultimately led to Marvel taking the top spot in sales in 1972 and never really looking back. And now you're on the big screen. You know, it's, it, it's still the, the same comic wars in a sense, except that it's playing out in the, in the movie theaters. And then again, you can really make the argument. You can trace it all the way back to that initial moment in 1960 where there's a dimensionality to the Marvel characters that just seems to be missing in the DC characters. So the fact that you can trace all of these things back, you know, you can, you, there's that thread. I find that absolutely riveting, you know, and, to, and, and that's one of the things we try to do on Business Wars is kind of let that unfold until it dawns on you listening to the podcast. Holy cow, this is what, oh my gosh, this is how it, <laughs> oh, that's what happened. So that's, I mean, that's part of the challenge, but it's also part of the joy of, of storytelling is when, and I, and I wish I could, you know, actually see the listeners as they're experiencing it because, you know, I, I had that kind of moment as we were doing the, the story. It was like, oh man, this explains so much, you know? I, I kind of felt that way about uh, the, um, uh, now the Marvel DC story is one I'm, I've kind of grown up with, so I knew that. One I, that was, I really kind of opened my eyes was uh, Monster Cable versus Beats. Um, yeah. I had no idea. I mean, most people come to the story when when Apple buys Beats for whatever it was, $3 billion or some such uh-huh. thing. But hearing mm-hmm. about Monster Cable, first of all, uh, you, 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 you really rip, uh, I hope you don't mind me saying it, but you really rip Monster Cable's whole business plan <laughs> from the beginning, <laughs> telling the story about, you know, they're basically just convincing people to buy much prettier, uh, much smarter looking cables. It, it doesn't sound like they, anyone particularly needs them. But then the son of the founder uh, of Monster Cable decides that, that he's just a business genius, even though he's really green. And he cuts this horrible deal with Beats and pays for it over yeah. and over again. Right, right, right. I, I, I you know, it's it's a funny thing because um, I had the same thought about about uh, Monster. I can remember when I first saw the Monster cables. Uh, you probably can too. At at uh, you probably saw it at Circuit City. I'm betting. I wonder probably, how many of yeah. your listeners remember Circuit City. <laughs> uh, but I, I, but one of the, the the interesting things about the Monster approach was that they were selling you high end for what you what a lot of folks could afford what the everyday joe could afford so gold cables gold tip cables sure that'll make my stereo sound great uh-huh right right but what it was was it was accessible and yet premium at the same time and and that was kind of the genius of uh, of 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 monster but at the same time there was a a, a, a huge layer of cynicism to that as well i mean you know, a sucker born every minute almost, you know. Um, and, and I have to be honest too, I'm no fan of beats. Uh, and I remember when beats came out and having that same kind of suspicion, (laughs) am I getting sold, you know, kind of gold cables, gold tipped cables here. Um, so, I mean, in a sense, I, I think you could make the case that beats was a kind of more modern manifestation of a similar phenomenon. Uh, now, you know, I, 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 uh, I, I'm not altogether sure, but I think that in a way, part of the narrative sort of suggests that there might be something to that. You know, sometimes we want things to be premium so badly that we convince ourselves that it is, you know, mm-hmm. and, and, and that's something that I mean, just, I, I think is, uh, again, just all too human. It's one of those realities. And, 
and it's one of the one of the strands that I enjoyed in that whole Beats versus Monster uh, uh, series as well. I just had an experience with this recently that made this very real for me. I, I huh. my my laptop last fall broke down on me. I was visiting uh, my son at FSU, Florida State, uh-huh. and right. uh, so I went to the store. They, they're an Apple dealer, and I. I replaced my laptop. I had to. I just had to have it. And they threw in uh, Beats, a Beats headset. It was a promotion they were doing, and they threw it in. I would never have bought one, partly because I've lost hear- some hearing in my right ear. It just doesn't make sense. But okay. I was like, okay. So I just my son said, oh, can I have those? I said, sure. So he used them for a few months, and this week he was he was down here visiting, and he gave them to his mother because – he said, they're really, <laughs> really uncomfortable, which I heard that the very same day I heard the episode of Business Wars where, How funny. where the guy from Monster Cable confronts Jimmy Iovine and uh, Dr. Dre and says, you know, they're not very cool and they're very uncomfortable. And I just thought, wow, <laughs> I just saw that in my own house. That's crazy. That's so funny. Yeah. That is so funny. <laughs> yeah. I mean, you know, that's one of the other things about business wars that I've, I've given some thought to, and, and I, I think it could probably be mined a little bit more, but it's how much these brands have become part of our lives that we don't stop and think about very much, right? I mean, it's not just that we we become partisans, you know, in these business wars, in a sense. I mean, there are Apple people, right? And and there are, there are Samsung people, or there are Nike people, and, 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 you know, there are Adidas people. And yeah, we can cross lines if we want to. We're just consumers. But we have our favorites and we kind of, you know, we, we, we kind of want to stand behind them. And it's almost a statement when you walk away from them or when you turn, you give, you give your mom your Beats headphones. That's a that's like kaboom right there. You know, that that there's something that's happening there. And uh, I, I hope that maybe as people listen to the series that they think a lot about what it is and why it is that we invest so much in these in these brands. And maybe there's no better example of, of the power of, of the brand than Monster versus Beats because it, it's not actually a, about necessarily superior quality. It's about what we think we want and what we think will satisfy whatever that appetite is or whatever that need is. You know, mm-hmm. uh, Steve Jobs really had a beautiful insight on this, and I hope that at some point – we wind up doing that Apple versus Samsung, or, or maybe it's Apple versus Microsoft. I'm not sure, but but at some point, I'm, I, I feel rather confident that we're going to be approaching that. And and I think that um, I, I think there's something to that 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 idea of how we attach ourselves to those brands that maybe is even bigger than whatever the commodity itself is that we're we're fighting about. Well, uh, David, uh, one more question before we let you go. Can you tell us uh, any of the the wars that are upcoming? Uh, I'm sworn to secrecy. Oh. I, I wish I could. I wish I could. Oh, all right. But, I mean, I, I, I cannot. I cannot. But we're working on some really terrific ideas. Uh, and uh, I would just say stay tuned, as they say in radio. Wow. Um, uh, pop on in. if You know, we're, we're at all the, the uh, favorite podcasting sites. And uh, uh, stop on by and see if there's uh, something that interests you because uh, – We've got some good ones in the pipeline. Well, as the as the author of the uh, Home Depot book with the founders of the Home Depot, I'm going to hope for Home Depot versus Lowe's. Um, <laughs> That's good. Yeah, I like it. Uh, all right, uh, folks, listen. Uh, listening to the Business Wars podcast is free. Just go to Wondery.com. That's W-O-N-D-E-R-Y, Wondery.com, backslash shows, backslash business, dash wars, backslash, and catch the latest show or subscribe, and you'll have access to all the ones you've missed, and if you subscribe, you'll get the new shows as they drop. Uh, David, is is the show or are you available on uh, Twitter or Facebook? Do you interact with people? Uh, well, I'm sure the show is. I don't do social media personally. Okay. I, I, I've sworn it off. But uh, but you know, you can always visit Wondery or Wondery Plus and uh, and and get the get the latest scoop. Very good, uh, David Brown. Thank you so much for joining us on Mr. Media today. Well, thank you very much, Mr. Media. I appreciate you taking time to talk with uh, talk with me about uh, about business wars. We're having a blast, and uh, hope some of your listeners will uh, will stop by and say howdy.
true believer Turn up the stereo receiver Turn up the stereo receiver Mr. Media is recorded live before a studio audience full of podcast fans who like nothing more than a brutal war of perceived slights and misunderstandings. Mark Marin versus the world, baby. In the Nooney Media Cap of the World, St. Petersburg, Florida. Hi, this is Rich Scheidner. And if you've ever wondered what it was like to be a stand up comedian in the 1980s, I'm going to do you a big favor. Instead of billions of dollars for a time machine, you can just spend $24.95 and buy my new book, Kicking Through the Ashes, My Life as a Stand-Up in the 1980s Comedy Boom. It will save you money and give you thrills. It will take you there. Go to my website, richscheidner.com. Go to amazon.com and buy this book.